Hello once again, I'm Extra Life, and this is the Korg DW8000, a classic digital analog hybrid synthesizer. I've owned this for a while, and I haven't used it all that much lately. So as I was thinking about kind of downsizing my studio gear, making room for new stuff, I pulled this one out and tried to decide whether or not I could part with it, and the more that I played with it and heard the sounds it makes, the harder and harder it was to make that decision. So I thought I might make a quick video on some of my favorite sounds and patches and features, and what it is that makes this synth so hard to part with. So just to give you a brief overview of the architecture of the synth, it is a polysynth with two oscillators. They've got digitally sampled waveforms, uh, eight voices of polyphony. It's got analog filters, which give it a wonderful warm analog sounds, uh, dual envelopes, one for the volume, one for the filter, an LFO, which they call MG for modulation generator, stereo digital delay, and full MIDI implementation. For editing the sounds, you get this rather primitive interface, which is a bit like the DX7 with its single slider, and then you find the parameter you want to adjust and enter its number, so that's 31 for the cutoff frequency. We can adjust it with the slider. So you don't have one knob per function anything. However, there is an aftermarket controller called the Stereo Ping, which comes as a kit that you can build yourself. That said, I don't really mind this interface that much. It's got some interesting features that are very well thought out, like this octal numbering system where the keys go from 1 to 8, and there's no 0 and no 9. So the patch numbers, the first patch starts at 11, and then they go up to 18, and then the next bank starts at 21. So you have uh, eight banks of eight patches, or 64 patches altogether, but you don't have to learn hex, and you don't have to use 10 keys to enter them. It's quite elegant. So let's talk a little bit about the sounds. I've got my patch cheat sheet here. What I do when I get a synth like this that has uh, patch numbers, but no names, is that I make a list of all the sounds that are in the factory banks, and I give names to the ones that I like, and the ones that I don't, I leave blank. So those are blank slots I can save stuff to. Patch 11, the init patch, is a single sawtooth. <laughs> And the eight voice polyphony is great for those uh, kind of 80s polyphonic sounds. One thing I love about this keyboard is the joystick. I know joysticks are really particular and people like the brand that they stick with, but uh, this one's really easy to use. It's very springy, it's very tactile, and it has great responsiveness. And what I really love about this is the modulation, the uh, MG, the reason they call it MG instead of LFO, is that it's hardwired to these modulation destinations. So you can push up to send it to the pitch, or vibrato, or down to send it to the filter. Let's look at some other patches. This one I called Nights Off. This machine's great for those classic squelchy synthesizer sounds. And the filter on it, you can hear it's, it's really distinctive. You could spot it almost a mile away. It has an incredibly distinctive sound. I don't know what it's based on or how it's modeled, but it's got some resonance that goes way, way, way up. And you can hear the kind of digital envelopes interacting with the analog filters in, in a way that's really kind of warm and wonderful and difficult to duplicate. It also does pretty good electric piano sounds. So let's talk a little bit about the oscillators, because they are what makes this synth so distinctive. They are digital oscillators with sampled waveforms, and in theory they're sampled from real instruments, and in fact Korg tells us in the manual what they're supposed to be sampled from. This is a sawtooth. 
Korg says that that belongs to the brass strings and analog synthesizer instrument family. Fair enough. Number two, they say, is clarinet and analog synth. Three is acoustic piano. Four is electric piano. Five is hard electric piano. Six, they say, is clavinet, which maybe it could be. Seven is organ. Brass. Saxophone. Number 10 is violin. 11 is acoustic guitar. 12 is distorted guitar. 13 is electric bass. 14 is digital bass, whatever that means. 15 is bell. 16 is organ and whistle, which you can see is pretty close to a sine wave. So those are the oscillators, but obviously you don't have to use them as the instruments they're sort of sampled from or intended to be used as. And that's sort of the magic of this synth, is that you can have a synth patch with, you know, filters and stuff, but use these digital oscillators with crazy harmonics in them. Here's a patch I called Steel Drum. This one I named Video Choir for some reason. This one's called harpsichord. Here's marimba. In a way, it's fairly convincing as a marimba patch because it's got that nice, noisy onset that gives it that percussive character. But the ability to have that sustain when you hold a key gives it that great 16-bit video game sound I love. This one is named Swing Star, and you can hear that lovely stereo delay. This one I called X-Files. This one I called Clavinet, which is honestly more of a wish than a description. Fifty-eight I called Violin. And you can hear that delayed onset in the LFO, which is great for automatic vibrato. I actually really like this system where there's kind of a predefined routing between synth components. That way you're not diving into the menu worrying about what's routed where. You just turn it up or down depending on what you want to change. And it really simplifies programming. This implementation of the LFO is one of my favorite things about the synth. Sixty-six I called Wah Choir for obvious reasons. Seventy-nine 
68 is Tom Tom. The percussive sounds on the synth are actually quite good because it has a noise generator to go with its oscillators and also got something called auto bend, which is basically just a linear envelope applied exclusively to the pitch. If we select parameter 14, we can turn it on or off and apply it to either or both of the oscillators. And we can choose the polarity or which direction it goes. Seventy two, I called upright bass. This one's called warm pad. Here you can really hear the depth of that analog filter, and if you ever want to actually edit a patch on this synth, it's helpful to have the controller because it gives you one knob per function access to a bunch of stuff, and one button access to most of the rest. And you can really hear how lush that analog filter is, how it kind of tames those crazy digital oscillators in a warm and wonderful way. It has a great response that's really fun to play where you still get all that nice complex tonality from the oscillators, but it's not overbearing and harsh like an FM synth. Seventy-five, I called Kavinsky Melody. And you can hear that filter and the stereo delay working in tandem on this patch. One of the things I love about this delay is that it has its own built-in LFO, and you can adjust the depth and speed of it. So this is just the plain delay with no modulation. And then as we turn up the effect, it gets pretty extreme pretty quickly, but you can turn down the intensity and get a nice subtle sort of chorusing effect that is only affecting the delayed notes. It's sort of a little bit like a tape delay or maybe an early analog bucket brigade type. And it's a lovely way of getting that lush sound without just saturating your whole patch in chorus because you get this nice clear onset where everything's still in tune. And then all of the repeats have this wonderful warble to them. Up here in the top bank of 80s, I've got just some space-age sci-fi sounds. And like any good analog or digital synthesizer worth its salt, this unit can be coerced into making strange modulated noisy sounds like this, but because of the single slider programming interface on this unit, it's actually a little bit difficult to do that, and you sort of have to spend a lot of time hunting and fiddling and looking for stuff.
With the velocity to the filter, it almost sounds like sample and hold. Hopefully that gives you some idea of the capability of this synth. We haven't even talked about the ARP yet. It's got a wonderful adjustable speed arpeggiator built into it. I don't use it all that much, but it is a wonderful versatile ARP. It's got this great analog speed control, although it can also be synced to MIDI. The DW8000 also has these kind of unique six-stage envelopes with uh, attack, decay, breakpoint, slope, sustain, and release. And I couldn't tell you off the top of my head what breakpoint and slope actually do. It's got something to do with like a, an extra slope before the sustain where it reaches a point and then it comes back. Uh, and you can create these kind of long, complex sounds with them where the volume and frequency change over time. So, there you have it, the Korg DW8000, or at least my take on it, anyways. I think it's kind of an underappreciated classic. It's a really versatile synth, it does a lot more than most of the analog synths from this era, and I think it's a little bit more convincing in analog sound than most of the digital ones. It's got a great MIDI implementation, I think the hardware, the keyboard in particular, are really nice. I love the way the joystick works, it's nice and springy, and it's hardwired to both of my favorite parameters on it, so I can't complain. The interface is a little bit fiddly, but it's not quite as bad as something like a DX7 where you're dealing with, you know, six operator FM synthesizers. It's uh, just two oscillators and all of the parameters are right here for you to learn. It's also a lot more affordable than most vintage polyphonic synthesizers. I think I bought this one on Craigslist for about $150, and a lot of times what happens is that the battery will die on these units, and because the battery is hard connected to the main circuit board, people think that, oh, the whole synthesizer is broken, but all you have to do is pop off the bottom case and spend a couple minutes desoldering the terminals, pop on a new one, and you're good to go. So it's a great way to get in cheap into vintage synths, especially polyphonic ones. Anyway, let me know if this is a video format you enjoy. I love nerding out about all this old stuff and talking about synths and making sounds and discussing the technicalities, so if that's something you're interested in, I'd be happy to keep doing it. I'd also like to say a big thanks to everyone who has joined me over on Patreon. It really means a lot to me to have your support and it means that I'm able to take more time to edit these videos and make them more frequently. So thank you very much, and if you are interested in getting early access to all the new videos, as well as seeing a little bit of bonus content, head on over to patreon.com slash extra life and become a supporter today. Thank you as always for watching, I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you next time.